Welcome to the news tonight on NDTV Hindu. We are talking money matters, politics, education and the cityscape on this primetime bulletin tonight. Good evening, I'm Evelyn Matthew. Well, it has been quite a disappointment for all Indian cricket fans, especially at Lords. We'll be bringing you the latest stuff from Lords, of course, and also the Billiards and Snooker National Championship in terms of the men's singles. Coming right up in just a bit. Before we go across to all of that, uh, let's take you through the headlines we're tracking tonight. How much longer till textbooks and a proper syllabus reach our children? The Apex Court verdict is awaited as the state calls it an injustice. A. Raja now says he didn't mean to implicate the Prime Minister in the 2G scam, but Dr. Manmohan Singh chose not to set up a group of ministers. Raja also says he showed the Attorney General the press note. Vahan Bhati hits back saying Raja's charges are rubbish. Vigilance officials search residences of senior police officers and bureaucrats in the city after complaints of land misuse. The RBI hike rates uh, once again, this time by half a percent. Get ready to pay more for home and car loans. Tiny Tot Arif is still missing. Last seen with a beggar in Oteri, the cops gather leads into the kidnap case. Police zero in on a suspect after a DMDK worker was hacked to death last afternoon in front of his son. Tamil Nadu's government exchange website needs a reboot as internet cafes charge higher rates for a browsing. Veteran actor Ravi Chandran is no more and put to rest. The chief minister who once shared screen space with him pays her respects. And take a cue from this mama-to-be, snooker champ Vidya Pillai claims her sixth national title before she moves on to represent Karnataka next. There's been plenty making news across the country and the world as well. Let's get you the national headlines. Still defiant and refusing to quit, Karnataka's chief minister says the prime minister should first quit as many as in his cabinet are corrupt. The government allows his regime to stay indefinitely after the nun working with leprosy patients was asked to leave after 30 years. And Pakistan's new foreign minister, Hina Rabani, is in the capital ahead of the foreign minister's meeting. A day after naming him in court in connection with the 2G scam, the former telecom minister A. Raja today told the court that uh, he didn't mean to implicate the Prime Minister and then Finance Minister P. Chidambaram. He added that the Prime Minister chose not to set up a group of ministers to look into how the licenses were being granted. He said he was being accused of overriding the group of ministers but while he was concerned about a conflict of interest in referring to it uh, to the ministers, the Prime Minister could have done so but Radha said the Prime Minister did not it was the Prime Minister's uh, uh, judgment and it could have formulated a group of ministers if he really wanted to. Now, A. Raja continued to whip up a storm today when he took over his own defence from his lawyer for some time, taking on the Attorney General Vahanvati. The accused minister attacked Vahanvati on the con controversial press note on the first come, first serve rule for spectrum allocation that was allegedly amended to include a cut off date after the Solicitor General saw it. Raja said, and I quote, I amended it. DOT Secretary Siddharth Mehura showed him my note. Later on, now the Attorney General called Raja's allegations rubbish, but he said that the press note he saw was unamended and it was amended later on by Raja himself. Moving on to some uh, news from the state, uh, that's of uh, local news. The uniform syllabus still hangs in the balance as the Supreme Court verdict on the implementation is taking on much longer. The argument against the state government's decision has been in progress. The senior counsel for the government argued at the apex court challenging the implementation of a syllabus which did not follow the national curriculum framework of 2005. He also argued that the high court did not consider the unanimous decision of the nine-member panel committee. As defence, the government had decided to postpone the implementation of syllabus indefinitely because the syllabus was substandard, else it would prove as injustice to the students. So as of now, a verdict is likely only in the next two to three days. Senior police officers and bureaucrats in Chennai were today raided by officials in charge of tackling corruption. These raids were carried out in connection with sale and misappropriation of plots allotted under the government discretionary quota. The raids included the home of Jafar Saith, who was the intelligence chief when the DNK was in power. The raids were also conducted at eight other places, including Karananidhi's former secretary's son's house, 
This following allegations that Mr. Seth had suppressed information to get the government housing board plot allotted for him and that he defrauded the government by further developing property, entering into an agreement with a construction company for pecuniary gains. Jafar is currently serving as the special officer of the Lankan refugee camp at Mandabam. The other officers include Jay Shankar, Balraj Johnson, Kasturi Raj, Najibuddin, Birnas, Durga Shankar, as well as the landmark constructions. And it was conducted by the Directorate of Vigilance and Anti-Corruption. It's been a no-show for Kalagnidi Maran, who has been summoned by the city police today in connection uh, with cases against the COO of Sun Pictures, Hans Raj Saxena. In fact, uh, the Sun Network chairman and managing director was uh, set to appear before them for questioning on cheating cases filed by uh, film distributors T.S. Selvaraj and Shanmugavail of S Salem. Earlier, uh, Mr. Maran had missed a summons as he was out of the city, but top police sources have told us that a second summons is now going to be issued to Mr. Maran, that is, if he had failed to turn up today before the investigating officer. In fresh developments in the Kotupuram murder case that took place last afternoon, police say they have identified the suspects. Five special police teams have launched a manhunt to nab the accused persons. The 36-year-old DMDK party carder was hacked to death by a gang in broad daylight in the area yesterday. The man who lived in the nearby slum clearance board housing complex was returning home with his son back from school on his bike when a gang arrived in an auto rickshaw and bikes with some weapons and unveiled an attack. Police suspect previous enmity to be the cause of the crime. And our crime correspondent Salim has more details. Following the interrogations with the suspect, the police say that they have formed five special teams and that they have identified uh, the accused persons as far as this case is concerned. The police uh, say that uh, uh, they suspect previous enmity to be the cause of crime and uh, there is no political rivalry between the two persons as far as the police uh, is concerned. They say that uh, investigation is going on the right track and that they will be in a position to nab the accused persons very soon. They have sent their special teams uh, to various districts of the state. Moving on, no news of the tiny tot. Missing Arif has only made that wait for his parents all the more grave to handle. NDTV Hindu tracks this particular story. Well, not to be seen over the past two weeks, Arif's home in Chindadri Pet has only had more and more praying and hoping for a miraculous rescue of their little baby boy. But in what could lead the police to some vital clues, a neighbor's son has spotted the boy on the shoulder of a beggar in Oteri, the area from which the child went missing from. Police are investigating the case. Now get ready to pay more for a house or a car that you've planned to buy. The Reserve Bank of India today raised the repo rates, the short-term lending rates, by 0.5% to 8%. The hike in repo rate is more than consensus expectations of a 0.25% hike. This is the 11th time since March 2010 that the RBI has raised interest rates, making it the longest rate hike cycle in nearly a decade. The RBI has been increasing interest rates in a bid to contain rising interest inflation, welcoming the RBI's decision to hike key rates by a hefty 50 basis points. The Finance Minister Pranav Mukherjee said it will help bring down inflation to a comfortable level of 6-7% to by the year end. But this hike means lending rates of banks is set to increase. That means consumers will have higher loan rates and home loans in addition to the EMIs which will get pricier once the banks set their base rate. These are to maintain an interest rate environment that moderates inflation and anchors inflation expectations. To manage the risk of growth falling significantly below trend. And finally, to manage liquidity to ensure that monetary transmission remains effective without exerting undue stress on the financial system. When we come back, Pakistan's youngest and first woman foreign minister grabs all the attention in the capital today. But will this beauty deliver? Find out when we come back.